Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach, and today's episode, we are going to focus on making a wildlife overpass and building out a nature reserve for Playa de Matero. But before we get to that, I want to make a couple of corrections that you guys all pointed out in the comments. Very excited to, to make these because... <laughs> Some comments are just uh, really, really omnipresent. <laughs> this is one of them. Uh, so the comment was that this turnaround is in the wrong direction. So we are going to reverse that. So now if you were coming this way, you could loop around and stay on the correct side of the road the entire time. Another comment that I saw quite often was that it would be nice to add a fence in between the bike path and the road. That's actually not possible without demolishing the bike path, which will lead to demolishing the rocks. So we're going to place this sound barrier which will have kind of a similar effect. We're gonna take some liberties, and I think it's gonna be just fine. And let's take a look at what this looks like. Yeah, I agree, that's a much better solution here, so I thank you for that idea. So the last episode was very controversial, and uh, I saw comments ranging from, I'm glad that you did this, it's nice to see something that's not so perfect, which City Skylines pushes you towards, to, I'm a show for the oil industry. <laughs> And it is currently 2183. Why would anyone be using oil? And to that end, I say, you know, I'm not a show for the oil industry. <laughs> I, I do believe in green energy. I have solar panels in my house. I think I've told people that. And I, I, I do believe that we are moving towards electric vehicles. In fact, so much so that I think it would be valuable in implementing that policy in the build right now. But I don't believe that that actually fixes everything for us. In fact, there are so many products made out of petroleum that we have a lot of work to do before we as a society can, can move beyond oil. So main concerns, asphalt. So every single road in this community is likely made of oil. Unless you have pavers or concrete, most of the time though you see asphalt, which is actually a byproduct of the gasoline production process. We have plastics. Even if you're driving a Tesla right now, there is plastic inside of your vehicle. So we've got a lot of work to do before we can be totally oil free. So even if we have all electric vehicles, which we now have in this community, we, we've banned all vehicles that aren't electric, we still have a problem. And that is that we still have a lot of products. That's everything from paints to pens, to fuel for jets, fuel for our shipping containers, uh, natural gas to heat water up and heat homes. And uh, you know, the big one in my mind is asphalt. You know, we could switch to concrete, but no one likes that. Uh, it's, it's bumpy. So you, when you drive down a concrete road, you have a lot of road noise. Uh, when you need to repair a road that's made of concrete, it's much more difficult. If you need to cut in to access the water pipes that are underneath the road, you end up in a situation where it could take weeks to actually get that road fixed because you have to let the concrete Creek here. So there's a lot that goes into it and a lot that you need to think about. And until we have a better solution for all of this, I don't know where I don't know where we stand with oil. So I, I consider myself a pragmatist. And as much as I would like to believe that everything's going to be uh, a light switch flipped overnight, I just don't see it that way. So that's why we still have oil in the build. The next thing I want to fix is related to this right here. So we have these trees and the winner by a very narrow margin, at least in my estimation, was flowers. It was either flowers or the young lindens. We'll, we'll work those lindens in more, but we do want to preserve those views. And I do think the flowers do look nice. If you were walking it down here, it would really give a nice atmosphere. So we're going to get into building this nature reserve, but I want to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, NordPass. Hey man, why do you look so blue? Someone just stole my password to Amazon and bought a peel and stick decal of two seniors on a golf cart, a bacon scented mustache, a doggy hair dryer, and a Nick Cage sequin pillow, and sent them all the way to Clearwater County. What am I gonna do? Sounds like you need NordPass, so you can save all of your passwords in a secure password manager. NordPass recognizes the websites that you access the most and automatically fills in your login details so that you won't have to remember anything. Better yet, it will even help you create complex, secure passwords using their built-in password generator. You can access all of your login credentials from any device, and NordPass offers unlimited notes and credit card storage too. If you opt for NordPass Premium, you'll get additional features, such as password health reports, a data breach scanner, and the ability to share items with people you trust. Best of all, if you sign up using City Planner's link, you can get NordPass for up to 70% off with an additional month free. 
Thank goodness, man. I need to recover my Amazon account so that I can get that Nick Cage pillow for myself. You do you, man. Just remember to check them out using the link in the video description. NordPass.com slash CityPlanner or use code CityPlanner at checkout. Thank you so much, NordPass, for sponsoring today's video. Let's get into the nature reserve. So I want to take a look at our terrains. So this is difficult because I think ideally we would build a bridge. We already have this road here. We wouldn't want to demolish the road, uh, bring a bunch of fill here, build a tunnel through it, or you know, I, maybe ideally, ideally, we would have built that tunnel first. Um, that said, we are where we are. The terrain is not favorable to tunneling, so we're gonna need to create favorable terrain for that if we wanna do this in vanilla. So uh, maybe the best place to start is looking at our resources. We can see that right here is where the forest almost connects. Now we're gonna be planting a ton of trees today. So I'm not overly concerned about that aspect of this so we, we're gonna we'll get to that um so we will get these to connect but i do want to to make sure that this kind of makes some sense that we're, we're doing it in a place where there was naturally forest even if it's lightly forested before we uh dramatically increase the forest density so let's go through here and we're gonna pick a terrain height that will allow us to create a tunnel so i think as we look at this gotta go Maybe right here. We got to be very careful with this. Now we could slope this down and we very well might. But if we do that, we need to find two terrain heights that are going to work for us. And I don't know that it really matters because we don't need the tunnel to be huge. We just need it to be sufficient. And this is probably good enough, maybe even a bit bigger than it needs to be. Let's smooth this out a little bit. Okay, so now I think we're ready to go, and I want to get this tunnel started. We'll turn on all of our snap twos and drop this down. We are going extreme right now, and I want this to be as gentle as possible. Then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side. There we go, a very gentle tunnel. We're gonna clean this up, make it look a little bit better, and this, this road right here. So we've severed this neighborhood, and I'm okay with that. Uh, we're going to do something with the homes here. Uh, there will be homes here, first of all. I think that that's important for me to, to specify. So we're going to have some homes backing up to the nature reserve. And we're, we're, we're going to make it kind of a special place to live. Um, okay, so that'll be the bounds of our neighborhood. We're not going to connect these through. Uh, there will be fences that separate these homes from the nature reserve. And in between those fences, we are going to have some key openings to the park. Uh, the park is going to extend all the way up. We're not going to just look at this little area right here as our nature reserve. We're going to, we're going to go beyond that. Uh, I want to start off by making this area look reasonable. So we're going to need another pad down here. And then I'm just going to smooth out the edges a little bit. And the main reason I'm doing this is we're going to have a lot of fences around here to direct the wildlife to go this way. And I want to make sure that it's going to look as good as it can. So there we go. That is really what we're looking at here. We're looking at a situation where we can have some nice clean fences. We will go with something a little more extreme. I don't want the animals to be scared off by all the traffic and the traffic noise. I'm going to overshoot this just a little bit for the time being, and we will come back and correct this. I find it's easy to, to use the guides that it gives you and then correct them later on. Easier than just trying to get it right the first time anyway. So just coming back through and deleting these is going to be much simpler for us. And now I'm going to add some of the fences that we'll have behind our homes. I'm giving them some larger lots, and then we'll get rid of these paths and now you can see that it's kind of directing animals into this area so this is going to be our main area for animals to cross and we are going to extend this fence down a ways to continue that direction uh, the, that directionality there now i've left space here so that we can add some landscaping 
and really make this road feel like it's hidden inside of the forest. Uh, but I don't want to stop there. Uh, so one of my concerns is that we are going to have uh, some pedestrian activity through here. And if we don't plan this right, and actually I, I think I made a mistake already, uh, we need to find a way to get people from this lower end of the park up here. So let, let me draw out what I'm thinking for the park. So right now we've got this area. We're going to extend this up here as well. And now I'd really love to see what's going on here so that we have an understanding. So it's, it's using all of that, that layering that you have available to you. And we're going to go all the way up to here. This is all park. So let's look at our terrain heights now. And I'm going to protect more of this. I'm going to come all the way down here. And if we do this right, this park could really connect the entire community with pedestrian facilities. So it could serve not just as a, as a place to observe nature, uh, but also as a, as a place for connectivity. So I want to do double duty there in that way. Now we're going to extend this out this way as well, uh, though I'm a little dubious. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. We might have another uh, we might have another pass and develop a bit of this area. I know we, we shouldn't. We, we're not going to. That doesn't make a ton of sense. So we'll go through here. So initially, when you looked at the plans that we had for this area, this was all to be a park and we will respect those plans. This, after all, was dedicated. The, com the community can always give back land that's, dedicate that's been dedicated to it, but boy, oh boy, you better expect some backlash if you <laughs> give land back for development. So now we have this massive park, the biggest park in the city, and I need a name for it. Lafayette Hill is probably not the greatest name for it. So if you have some naming ideas, drop them in the comments, and I will pick the one that has the most... Uh, the most, uh, I'd say the most votes, but I, I, we'll see. The one that has uh, the most people talking about it uh, in a positive way. And I only say that because there were multiple people who commented about the Young Lindens separately, not liking the, the, the first comment. So uh, it's difficult to see that sometimes. Okay, so now I want to path through here. And I mentioned that I might have made a small mistake. So I think that I didn't give enough separation here between the neighborhood and the park. So we'll get rid of this because I really want to have the path off from the wildlife bridge. So let's go ahead. This will be the, the, the last thing I do before we get to actually constructing the park. So I want this to be as low as possible. I think I'm going to have to go up three notches. And it's actually four that it's going to require. So, uh, and then I want to circle back around. And so what we're going to do is come through here and we're going to circle around now that that might be in the wrong spot so why don't we just focus on that circle so we, we have our guidelines on and we'll go out a few now this is hard in vanilla and look at that it's actually going to demolish my path so we'll go out three and down three and drop this down and that is not going to work. We're going to need to go out even further. There we go. And the game is forcing me to make this really tall, which is not at all what I want. Uh, I am going to give this a shot, but you kind of see what I'm going for now. I want there to be this rounded... Uh, I want it to, to be a gradual path up. You can get over, you can check out the wildlife over, over crossing and check out the road, get some views of the community, get some views of the volcano. But at the same time, you are still in the park. So let me give that a shot right now. Okay, so this is what I've come up with. It's a little bit cleaner than what we had before. Now the problem is, I think that we're going to need to upgrade these at some point to the self-leveling pads. I'm very concerned about what that's going to do. Let's see. Oh, actually, I really like what that's done to this. So maybe I shouldn't have been so concerned. 
<laughs> because it looks a whole lot more rational now. That looks really good. So if you are up here at about this height, excellent views. It's a really beautiful bridge. And we are gonna flesh that out a little bit more with some landscaping and things of that nature soon. So let's think about our entryway to this park. So first of all, we need to have our main gate. So we'll pop in here and we'll grab our nature reserve main gate. So we've got two to choose from. We've got this small one and this large one. Let me take a look at the, the, the small one. Actually, this is a, a major nature reserve. Truthfully, I don't even know if this is the side that would have the main gate, but we're going to consider it. We'll consider this the front for now. And oh, we're gonna, I, I'd love to put this near the tourism hub, but we don't know exactly what this railway network looks like yet. So that would probably be a fairly natural place for it. This may move for the time being. I'm gonna put it right here. And we will ensure that there's a way to cross the street there by adding a bike connection. And then on this side, we'll upgrade the road and that will help us get that crossing there. So very good, we've added a node, things are looking good. I'll just upgrade these up and Young Linden Gang, here we go. <laughs> there we go. So now we can start to get this uh, get this or, uh, set up and organized. And I want there to be uh, many places to get into the park. I want there to be a dedicated camping area, rock climbing, uh, this would seem to make a, a make good sense there. We're not going to do a ton over here. Um, this will come in later episodes. This park will be built in, built in phases. Uh, so right now, it's just this small park that serves this community here with tons of access points to get into it. So when I say tons, I mean tons. So we've got this side gate. We'll start with that right off the bat. This isn't even that far away, but we'll have it here anyway. And then let's add some fences to get this all set up. I was really hoping I could use the road guideline to, to get this situated. Unfortunately, it's not gonna work. I might need to go just to, oh uh, yeah, it's actually the location of this park generally that it doesn't like. So we'll move it up just a little bit, see if that works. We've got our curved road tool and I just, don't love the connection that it's making still. So I'll do it myself. So I'll just use the freeform tool and turn off all of my guidelines and then just place this as close to the road as I can. So this will be one of the few areas where we do not have homes backing directly up to the nature reserve. But I think over here we will. And we're certainly gonna have a neighborhood back here. So let's get that drawn in and we'll use our planning roads and we'll even plan our pads out. So this will extend the existing roadway network up here. There we go. So now you can kind of see that this has been brought in. So let's now make our first connection into the park. And this one will be fairly utilitarian if someone wanted to be able to get direct access to the other side of the park we can do that. So goes right across. We are gonna have some more meandering paths through here, but that's not one of them. Uh, so for camping, I think we're gonna to wanna to keep that fairly internal so we can hopefully block the lights of the city with landscaping or see the Colossus, one of the two. <laughs> so, and I'm gonna add a few more park, park gates right now, right off the bat, so that we know where these are so we can get our trail network in place. I wish that I could make this one centered a bit more, but I, I think that if I can't center it where I want, I might as well completely offset it so that it looks like it was a <laughs> done on purpose. Now let's, I'm not really respecting our terrain right now. I don't want to cut straight up if I can avoid it. So I will kind of switch back this around. And I think in an effort to not block this area right here, we are going to just sever this connection. So this is not a place where you can run in a circle. You can get all the way around, you can get over and through, but you cannot walk past this wildlife area. We don't want to block that if we can avoid it. So there we go. 
I think that's the general layout that we're going to stick with for pads through here. So we've given some access to what will be our future climbing area. We can have some camping maybe off here. We'll add some landscaping through here and uh, we're protecting this area for nature. So I'd love to be able to add a water feature through here. I just think that in vanilla, it's just uh, not, not, not super convenient to do that. Not just not convenient. It's, it's very difficult and you can end up with uh, a feature that just doesn't look right. Uh, the one that we have in the zoo, I think turned out great. This one likely wouldn't. So we're going to not have a water feature here, which is totally fine. If you had mods in the game, you could certainly bring those in, but, but we're going to not do that this time around. So I think that it would be nice to start thinking about some of the views here to start out with. So I, I am going to add a couple of overlooks and I'm doing this right off the bat because I do not want to block these when I add in landscaping. Uh, and the reason why we're doing that is, you know, even if you go to Hawaii or a place that is really tropical, you're going to see more than just palm trees in a forest. It's really uncomfortable, truthfully, having these palm tree forests with these palm bushes and nothing else. So we're going to do more than just that. We're going to really jazz this thing up. Um, beyond this, though, I don't know that we're going to have a ton more overlooks. Right here, that's a great view of downtown. So you're coming through nature to view the urban the urbanity of, of this place, I guess. <laughs> Which is kind of kind of ironic in a way. Uh, we're gonna extend this up and we're gonna leave a purpose for this trail as well. We don't want to just have a trail that for some reason just uh, terminates in a bridge. So we'll pull this up and we'll just cut straight up here. And then switch back and let's reach a high point so you have a reward if you come all this way you have a reward so I think that we need to have some sort of fence here and I really hate that, that, that it terraforms it this hard um, but it, we don't really have uh, a better way of handling that besides me doing my usual grading uh, which we certainly could do here. Why don't you guys let me know? Do you want me to terrace this off? Uh, my inclination is to terrace off this end and leave this as a, as, a, as a cliff. But I'm very curious. When you guys are building, how do you do it? And I'm connecting this to keep people along the path. Again, we want to protect the wildlife. And so this side, whereas it's meant to protect you from falling off the path, this side, it's meant to keep you from disturbing the wildlife. So a purpose for both fences. And we can ex we can end this one soon. Like once we get to here, you're not gonna be disturbing the wildlife. <laughs> so we'll just end that and then we'll bring this back over here. And again, this is pretty steep. If someone were to fall off this, they'd have a pretty bad time, so. We are going to make sure that that never happens. Okay, so obviously we're going to need to think about the pads that the wildlife would be taking through here. And I think I've got to do a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do... I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> as much as I want to just leave this, I just can't. So I'm going to at least on the back end try to make this look just a little bit better. Although the game seems very mad at me right now. <laughs> I'm going to landscape this and it's saying, eh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that, sir. Okay, I think that looks a little bit better. Even if you're really into cliff's edges, I think it just looks better to have it backed off from the trail so that you can tell it's something that I planned and not that the game just created in response to my craziness. So this looks a little off now, so we're gonna fix a little bit of this and then we'll move on to the park itself. A little bit, of, little, little something there to, to give it some character. All right, so I now want to focus primarily on this park. So we've got this nice little setup here. Let's 
figure out our, our where we're going to be zoning here so that we can then go ahead and get our fences around the entirety of the park. In fact, I think that we don't even need to do our zoning right now. We can do our fencing. So let's get a whole bunch of fences in place. You guys know how much I love doing that. I am going to buy a fencing company someday, and it's going to be uh, the, my main goal in life. Because <laughs> I just apparently love it so much. What that really means is if you are a fencer, I appreciate you. It actually is a very challenging job, especially keeping up with all of the regulations that planners <laughs> are enforcing. And this is what I was thinking. So we have a couple of larger lots here. We could get in a few homes and then uh, really try to make it feel like they're in the forest. And this could be used to help fund this park. So obviously we have Drake Oil also helping fund this park, but that's likely not going to be enough. They, they are certainly helping, but the extent of that is unknown. Or I should say the extent is not unknown. It's, it's insufficient, <laughs> as, as it very likely would be. Uh, this would be a very expensive park. Uh, we're, in a, we're in a developed portion of the city at this point, and uh, with that in mind, all of this land is very expensive. So this is where I wish I had node controller because I just, you know, that's lumpy and bumpy. We're going to hide that with with a bit of landscaping. So we're not going to develop along here. Again, this is going to be uh, an area where we have tourism and where we really want to make sure that nature is respected. Oh, and we've got another one of these spots where we just cannot connect up. This is really uh, kind of a bummer. So what I think we're gonna do is try to make it look, uh, no, we're not gonna be able to make it look like we planned it. I'm gonna turn off angles and see if I can find an angle that it, now nothing, no angles will work with it. Which means that we've gotta move this or we've gotta fix the road. The road is fixed, I should say. It's not fixing the road, it's changing it. So I'm gonna delete a portion of this fence, slide this up and then hope that I can add a fence there, and then we'll need to adjust our trail accordingly. So a little bit of a mulligan, but I like it better than the alternative. Look at that, it's still upset. I like this option very little, <laughs> but I, I think it's the one that we're gonna have to go with. What this does do though, is it gives us the opportunity to connect our fence right up here. It's kind of, Kind of a weird little connection though. So we'll get rid of angle and then meet up there. It's not perfect. I don't, I, I'm not in love with it, but I guess I'm in like with it. We'll, we'll deal. That could be a ton worse. So at least we have our connections made here. There's a reason for using this entrance. It does back it off from that one. So from that perspective, it's a good thing. I'm a little concerned that this zoning didn't disappear here, so I do want, I think we might back out this fence. Truthfully, when we upgrade this, <laughs> when we upgrade this road anyway, there's a chance that if I have it too close to this dirt path, we end up demolishing it. So we'll just quickly get this to follow the grid, which will absolutely ensure that uh, we don't have any issues with the grid showing up. And then here, I think I'm just gonna follow the grid. Again, on this side, we have views that we're attempting to preserve. So we are not at all thinking about attempting to do anything on this side with, with housing. Now on this side, I do believe that we're gonna do more with housing. And the reason for that is uh, we've got some views, but these aren't great. Uh, smokestacks and things of that nature. So uh, I think that we could absolutely develop some land here. And then here we absolutely are going to. So we'll extend the park out a bit and have some really special lots. Okay, there we go. You start to see what we've developed over here. We're not gonna work on this side just yet but I do want to get this upgraded eventually by the end of the episode. We are 
at a point now where we can start adding some amenities to this park. Now, it's funny, it's so far over here. Lafayette Brook now, we're calling it. And our entertainment, wow. We already have, how does that work? We already have 829 entertainment in here. <laughs> so apparently something is really entertaining. I guess these must be the decks. What, let's, let's take a look at that. So I guess our main gates, we have a lot of gates and we have a lot of decks. So this is gonna be a very entertaining park because you can spend a whole bunch of time just entering and exiting. <laughs> so it's, that's a thing. All right, so from here, I think we need to start thinking about uh, the, the park itself. So I wanna get in this boulder site right off the bat. And look at that, we're gonna need to do some things here. <laughs> some things that I'm not super excited about. All of these terraforming assets when you're on a hill are really challenging. We are gonna struggle with those nonstop. Oh no, I took out the rock. That was not what I wanted to do. Okay, well, maybe we only need one of these sites and we're gonna need to add a rock back in. <laughs> because. I absolutely wanted there to be a large boulder here. I was really hoping not to destroy the one that was already here. That said, if we are gonna have to redo this, we might as well use this as an opportunity. And I, I thought it might be neat to overlap some of these and kind of make it feel like you are walking up into this large rock feature. And I, I, ultimately, I think I like it more now. So I hope that you guys do as well. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Is this better or worse to have this larger rock formation here? So now I wanna have some tenting, uh, tenting areas, uh, some tent camping areas. So we're gonna hop back in here and take a look. And terrain's really gonna matter here. And you can see that it's basically not flat anywhere in this park. <laughs> so I think we'll sneak it down here and see if we can level it. Yeah, that looks pretty awful. So we're gonna need to pre, I was hoping that we wouldn't have to, to level first, but I think that we're gonna have to. So at a, at a bare minimum, we need the area by the road to be flat. And if we do that, we should be able to get this to look natural. Uh, it's tense. They can, they can go at a snow, but it's not going to like that either. So we need more. And that looks pretty good. And then obviously if we're going to have that, we also need to have some restrooms and other amenities such as maybe a campfire or lean-to. We definitely need, so we have these overlooks here. We need a fire watchtower in here. <laughs> we, can't, we can't leave it like this. I'm also going to add in a few more and maybe we'll do this off regular paths. A few more, uh, just kind of more private secluded campsites. We can connect this up with just uh, one of the non-self-leveling paths which will give us a little bit more freedom here. You might notice that I'm keeping this all to one side and that is really to preserve those water views. So giving them their own place to uh, cook or roast marshmallows and then camp right next to that. And we'll fill this in with trees to grab uh, and create some divisions between there. Now I want a restroom site down here. And a place to get some water while you're over here. Well, no, we're not gonna do that. So this provides access all the way around. I like that. We could certainly add in some more amenities for some of these sites as well. And it's interesting, there are actually two different kinds of campsites. This one is little tents or little uh, little cabins. So we'll we'll have a cabin camping area as well for those that are not quite as interested in roughing it. So we'll add that over here. And there's going to be kind of a dark irony. So this is the, these are the hunting lodges. We have this wildlife area that they'll be able to move up and we have hunting lodges right off from there. So it, it, it does make sense. Uh, it it also is is a little dark. 
<laughs> so. And then I'm just adding a few amenities here. And if you look, these already have restrooms and tables. So there's not really much to add here, but we have some hunting lodges here, right here. These folks, I think they've got restrooms. They've got kayaks, I guess, and just in case they want to lug it down to the ocean, they could certainly do that. We could extend this park out and have it come by some water. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really into that whole idea though. Uh, and, and really, I don't know that there's a ton more that we really need to take care of here. In fact, uh, signage is probably the main thing. And a couple of key lights. I really want these not to be overlapped, if, if, if at all possible. So I'm going to... <laughs> so I want this to move. Apparently this is just the spot for it, if we're gonna, if we're gonna do this. Maybe if I extend this out, it'll move the name yeah, right on top. Perfect. Just what I was hoping for. Uh, so I'm going to remove the name from the park just so I can see and click on the park because the park name is showing up in the exact same place as Palma del Fuego. Palma de Fuego. And we'll absolutely clean that up in the future, but for the time being, that makes me happy enough. So. Our entertainment value is through the roof. <laughs> We're pretty good there. Let's advertise this. We are going to have a fine for fireworks. I'm going to recycle garbage. And we can have night tours. And let's, for the time being, make this a main park. I like that idea. So we will charge for access to this park. It is going to be a very significant national park. So obviously that we're going to need to be able to fund this. We're also going to need a few other things right now. When we think about the park, we have, uh, repair facilities across the water. We're going to need that here as well, a maintenance building. So I'm going to work that in. I'd love to bring this into the park itself. I don't know exactly how possible that's going to be. So this terrain is also problematic. <laughs> so well, I'm not, 100% sure where we're going to put this just yet. Might have another entry point to the park right off here in a dirt road. Yeah, that makes some sense. So we'll come in off this collector and then come back this way. And then we've got our park maintenance building back there. So we'll need utilities back here, which is going to be a bit of a, it's going to be a little bit of a, a challenge for the time being and maybe for a while. I wish that there was some sort of solar panels policy so I could just have solar panels or a small wind turbine. I think I'm just going to do that for the time being and we'll call that, call that good enough for this area. Cause I really don't want to have a, a, a big transmission line running down here. That's not very reasonable. Um, now it's time to add some some of the small details to the park. So wayfinding signage, lights and key locations, and then we're gonna add in some of our trees. Uh, the rest of this, uh, I guess we could add in some things like this as well. There's not a lot that I wanna add in here besides the trees. I want this to feel very, uh, very in tune with nature. We already have what is basically a glamping park. Uh, you know, it, it's a nice amenity for the community, but it's so urban around here uh, that, and, and it's so heavily trafficked, this will be a lot more calm. As a result, we want to have that, uh, that atmosphere maintained. So we'll have a large sign here and then have some smaller signs. Uh, we already have them here, so I'm just gonna add them to kind of key locations. And then I want a bit of lighting. So we're going to transition to night. Okay. And you can see, we can't see a thing here. So we're going to need lights by the restrooms. I wonder if I can even find them. There they are. <laughs> there we go. Very dim. Just right. Oh, that is absolutely stunning. Absolutely beautiful. I love that. Uh, we could also have some over here in case there are people attempting to head up and if we want lights on the bridge we need to upgrade it
Okay, so kind of providing the bare minimum in terms of lighting, get people across here and then go right back to it being dark. Um, and this reminds me, we have not done anything up here and we absolutely must. And that will include a little bit of tree removal, not a lot. One more overlook and then we'll have a small place to, uh, to take, a, take a load off, have a picnic. And this is the weird, uh, kind of the weirdest texture decal that comes with the game, in my opinion. I don't really understand it, um, but we'll go with it and add in some picnic tables. And if you made it this far, you absolutely must be able to use the restroom. <laughs> so we'll add that as well. There we go. That's pretty good. I think that that's, that's good. You get, you get a little, little bit of a reward for coming up here. Now, we need fire protection. I mentioned that before, and I'm not going to forget it. So we'll include that over here. And that gets part of the park. We'll add another one right over here. Now, from these locations, we don't need to have any pads. They'll function just fine. But I think it's nice to do so. So otherwise, how do you get out here? There you go. I think that that's pretty good, pretty good right there. So the very last thing I want to focus on is landscaping this. And uh, actually, why don't we get this zoning going first and then we'll landscape this. So our population is rebounding again, which is kind of, uh, you know, a thing. We are going to need to figure that out. I don't like what's going on. And I don't like that I'm removing my fences either, but that's a thing. Okay, we've got all of our fences back, so we are ready to zone. And I think this is going to be a very popular place to live. It, it, this, I, I've spoken in Clearwater County about the types of places I'd like to live. This would be right up there. I mean, to, to have the urban amenities and still be on a nature reserve. I don't know how you really beat that. And it looks like I missed a couple of fences here, so we'll add those in. Going. Let's make sure we have water pipes here. We do. We're perfect. We also have them underneath our uh, our nature reserve. So I will clean a bit of this up. And now the time has come for landscaping. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through this content creator pack. Or, the, or not, they're not even content creator pack. They're just the new landscaping. And we're gonna place in a number of the largest trees. And I want this whole thing filled in. So. Uh, this is where forestry brush would be nice, but it's okay. We'll just come through and I am going to click until my fingers hurt. Actually, we're going to fix this first and then we'll click until my fingers hurt. <laughs> and now I believe that we're ready. And I already see some places that I've made a mistake. I've been blocking views with large oak trees, just like this. So we're going to take a small break from adding in all of the landscaping and ensure that we are doing it in a thoughtful way. Now, it's not such a big deal here. We have those scenic overlooks and you wanna block some of those city lights. So if you could see city in between the trees, fine, but I do wanna make sure that we aren't blocking these. So I'm gonna slow down and avoid this area over here. Let's get back to it. I think that I have clicked the mouse button rapidly for about 10 straight minutes. But look at the effect. This looks like a forest. We don't have any other forests that look like this in Verde Beach. And it's really kind of a shame because this density of trees feels really good. And I've just, it just it really layers well. If you're back here, you don't see city. It doesn't feel like you're in the city. You do see watchtower. That's okay. You need that. But it feels like you're secluded and I, you do not feel that in the other nature reserve. So same thing here. If you're rock climbing, when you look around, okay, if you climb to the top of the rock, you see city. But within here, this feels like you're in a nature reserve. And that makes it worthwhile to me. I wish that we had the forestry brush <laughs> in the you know in the vanilla game i i think that on the xbox and playstation 
you have the ability to create a larger forestry brush, but you can't overlap landscaping in the same way. So it's kind of like, you know, paradox giveth and paradox taketh. <laughs> so you, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit of a conundrum. So I went through and I added just a ton. So if you're not tanking your FPS by adding a forest, maybe you're doing it all wrong. <laughs> You want to have this there. So now when you're at, in this road, look what you see. Beautiful skies and a forest. A very dense, thick forest. So I'm going to need to do this in multiple sittings because I cannot forest the heck out of this with one sitting with my hand being what it is <laughs> right now. Because it feels like my hand is about to fall off. So with that, I do think we need a quick city tour. Okay, and our day is coming to an end, and it's been, an, it's been an eventful one. We've done a lot with landscaping. This is very enjoyable for me. And now you see at, at night, just completely dark here with the exception of our overpass. And I don't know if anyone's actually taking the overpass to come up here. We should check that out. No. <laughs> <laughs> it looks pretty sparse up here in terms of utilization. Uh, in the next one, I do want to finish off this neighborhood, but we have had pretty significant development occur over here. And we're about to uh, detail the heck out of the rest of this city and, and finish it up soon. Uh, but I do think that there are some issues citywide that we might need to take a look at. We've got some issues with transit. We've got some issues with, uh, you know, these death waves. Now, we, now we're in a birth wave, apparently, adding on 200 people a week, which is great. When you see here, we take a look, we have a ton more births than deaths, which is great. But I'm guessing if we look at our deaths here, we still got 500 deceased folks in the city. So I've got to do something about that. That's not something that we can just stick with. Uh, but... I think we've <laughs> made some good progress today. So we're going to leave it here. Hope that you've enjoyed this one. If you did, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And uh, one more huge shout out to today's video sponsor. Thank you so much, NordPass, for sponsoring this video. I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.